Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another live stream here, straight from Chicago. I'm saying good morning because obviously I am located in the United States, and now I can see myself too. My name is Sin Ordu, and I am the founder of the Magic Penthouse, which means I am a professional magician, and I am here today to show you some magic and get you excited in these times where we can really focus on ourselves. Uh, where we get to learn new skills and do a whole bunch of stuff that makes our life better. So I'm excited for anyone who gets to join me right now live on Facebook. But of course, I'm really excited for anyone too who gets to watch this afterwards um, as these are beautiful pieces, hopefully, that I've designed for you today. Uh, I do want to give you an overview, a little bit of what we're about to do. Um, and if you're seeing I'm drinking tea because it's, it's kind of early here, actually, at least for me being a magician and doing events at night usually. Um, so we're going to do a couple of magic tricks, something simple, something you could be doing at home because you have cards at home. Maybe maybe you got coins at home, so we're going to be doing something like that later on. And if you stay on, we're even going to be doing an interactive trick that you get to do from home. Um, so if I can kindly ask you now, if you want to participate in this, uh, grab a couple of playing cards. It doesn't matter if they're old or new. But be aware that we will be destroying them. So maybe take some that you won't need in the future anymore. And then we'll be doing a, a trick that's interactive together uh, at the end of the show. And maybe if we find time, hopefully we do, we even get to do, uh, maybe I even get to teach you a trick. So you'll be able to make any coin or any small object vanish in the future and reappear if you're really good. And I'd love to teach you that too, just so you can pick up some new skills um, because magic is honestly one of the best skills out there. It breaks the ice no matter which country you are. Um, and you can go out to a cafe or a restaurant and just perform it at a moment's notice and people will always love it. So I'm really excited to teach you some of the magic too. So you get to do some of this amazing stuff where things just, oops, literally disappear and appear. So let's get started. I hope you guys uh, have lots of interest in magic as I do. If you uh, want to participate, we have a comment section on the side. So please just write your comments in the side or any questions. I'll be happy to answer anything that you got going on. So if you want to know how I get started in magic or who my mentors, please ask away. Um, that's what I'm here for today. So um, with that in mind, let's just get started maybe on the very first thing. I, um, I prepared some before we before I, I started this video. In fact, the deck of cards right here, um, which is red. This one's blue, so unrelated. I want anyone in the comments section just to name any card, right? So this this is a poker deck, which means it could be anywhere between two and ace. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, king, or ace. Just name in or write it in the comment section, any of those cards. And I hope that you guys know that I didn't pay anyone to write these comments now. <clears throat> so I'll wait as they come in because there's a little bit of a delay. Excuse me. Oh, fine. It is the morning. Okay. So um, once you think of a card, just write that in the comment section. Hopefully you guys uh, get that so we get to do something right there with the deck. Oh. Until then, I'll just start puking cards. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy that as well. All right, so I'm going to keep this in full view. I'm already seeing in the comment section someone said Ace. Uh, thank you for participating. So it says hello, even better. Uh, shout out to Smita. Now we need uh, which Ace? Ace of, you know, it could be. Let me actually, since you said Ace, let me just do this. There's the Ace of Diamonds, right? You could be thinking of that. You could also be thinking of the Ace of Spades right there. And obviously these are shuffled, right? Oops. So let me see if I can find another Ace. Yep. There you go. Ace of Hearts. And the last one, if you, I think we got a couple more comments, uh, but we need to name any of these four Aces. So uh, maybe Spades, Hearts, Diamonds, or Clubs. Uh, but either way, let's find that last ace here. Mm -hmm. Like this. Perfect. I don't know if you can see that, but one card's turned over. Ace of clubs right there. So 
Um, if I don't see any of them, <laughs> someone just said, oh my god, <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, I would, so name in the comment section right now any of those aces, because someone already said ace, now we just need to know which one. Clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds, and then we'll move forward with that. Oh, someone actually said hearts. This is crazy. This is so crazy. And I don't know why this works, because people are on the other side of the world right now watching this. But I had a prediction before we started in this deck, as I said. right? And I was thinking, what, what kind of card are people going to think about? Ace of Spades would be the obvious one, but people could have always gone for a seven because they tried to trick me. But someone just named, I actually have to look it up again, Ace of Hearts. Or it says up there, Ace, and then down there, Hearts. This is insane. I'm so happy. Watch. In this deck over here that's been set aside the whole time. I don't know if you can see this. Probably not. I, I come a little closer. Right there. There's one card turned face down in this whole deck. Again, I want to show you this. There's one card that was turned face down. If we did this right, that's the Ace of Hearts. <laughs> no, someone said clubs. <laughs> Sorry, I worked with the Ace of Hearts. That was the first one to be named. Um, so this is the this is the prediction trick that I love to do as an opener, just so you guys see how fair this really is, because your interaction matters here. Which means if you would have named the Ace of Clubs, which just Arvin did online, um, thank you for participating, you're a little late, then this would have maybe could have gone a completely different route. So we're going to play with what you have, uh, what you're doing at home right now, and what you give it input. So um, I actually, and this is this is a completely true story, I had a... I had a conversation last night with, with one of my good friends, um, and we were talking about, are people going to come out of this lockdown with new skills? Right? And we had different opinions on it, but it got me thinking. And I said, they should. We should really use this time to improve ourselves, to work on things that are happy for us, that make us happy. Um, so I decided I'm only going to do tricks now that I pretty much have never done before. This is nothing I would do at the Magic Penthouse. This is nothing I would uh, do at private gigs. This is something that was designed for this or that I've maybe been too scared to perform in the past. Um, but this morning, on a Sunday morning in Chicago, I somehow decided, let's let's go and, and take a little risk here with the people worldwide. So you guys are literally seeing uh, world debuts for me which means if they go wrong, don't be too harsh on me. But if they go right, show me some love in the comment section. Um, so let's do it. The um, A lot of tricks I would I would usually do would have to do with, with signing a card and all of that. Uh, of course, if I were to sign a card right now um, with a Sharpie, you, you wouldn't even believe me. So, um, you know, we might as well get rid of the Sharpie. There it is. I love working for the camera. So simple. You guys don't get to look at anything sneaky. <laughs> but look, I'll do you one better, actually. If I take off the cap, watch. Just like this. I'll keep the cap here. Now the Sharpie tip went down. Of course, if you try to draw on the cards, it wouldn't even allow that because it just jumps back up, right? Up, down. Absolutely crazy. I love that. <laughs> but here's another cool thing. What if I want to place the <clears throat> Sharpie back of the cap? Watch. Now that's enough. It's <laughs> like enough of the Sharpie. All right. As I was saying, uh, this is, for example, one trick I've never done before that I just figured I'd show you today. Just grabbing random things off the table as they are around me, as I would do in a restaurant or something, and make it vanish um, and make it come back. Well, sorry, I produce a lot of things from my mouth. Um, but anyway, let me show you a. Um, let me show. No, I'll do it with this. Let me show you a trick I've never done before that I'm really excited about. And I hope you guys can see the table here, all right, if I spread like this. Maybe I'll angle the camera down a little bit further. Perfect. So for this trick, I'm going to need someone in the comments section to name 
any number between 1 and 52. Because we got 52 cards here, and hopefully you get to see them, that they're all different. Um, I get to show, and they're actually in order, right? So you see, there's the hearts, there's the spades, there's the clubs, uh, the diamonds. Oh, we actually got two jokers, too. All right, so let me take these two jokers out. Uh -huh. Here. Perfect. Um, so anyone in the comment section, name any uh, any number between 1 and 52. And I'll cut right here so you guys can think, oh, I know exactly where he's going with this because, okay, I got someone saying compliance monitor guru. Thank you for participating. It's a 37, all right? I hope people believe me that I don't, I'm not in compliance with this monitor guru. <laughs> um, but we're going to count 37 cards here. And see, this, this is going to be something interesting. I'm actually going to make a prediction, and you guys could change your mind. I'm going to make a prediction uh, right here. I'm going to place that right there. Let me put that away. So 37. Now, someone, please say from top or from the bottom. Should we count from here or should we count from here? Just in the comment section real quick, top or bottom. Meanwhile, while people are writing and there's a slight delay, let me make another coin vanish for you. <laughs> there you go. So, top or bottom, everyone, just answer me right now. And we'll move. No answers yet for this. Then I'm just going to make a decision for myself. We're going to count uh, from, let's just, top. Someone says top. Perfect. So, 37 from the top, watch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, right here. And yes, in Germany we count to 20 and then we start counting again, so... Um, don't be too rough on me. Um, this card that you stopped me on right here could have obviously be, been any of the cards. Because they're in order, you can actually see that you stopped me between the seven of diamonds and the nine of diamonds, which happens to be the eight of diamonds. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but this doesn't isn't a trick in itself yet, unless, of course, I put one card from the beginning here that I predicted to be the Eight of Diamonds as well. Now you felt, uh, whoever commented 37 and whoever uh, commented top, you felt like you had a free choice there, right? I didn't send you a mail, I didn't send you a letter saying, oh, please come, you know, play from top. Um, but the trick is this is in inevitable. People feel like a lot of times they have free choices, but they don't. So for example, if you weren't gonna stop me right there, um, but instead you were gonna, you know, set up a number less here. So maybe, I don't know, you would have said um, 13, or if you wanna write a, another number right now in the comments, uh, I'll be happy to use that number. But if you would have said, let's just say 13, it wouldn't have been here. It would have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 13, right there. Now, the crazy thing is, this card that you stopped me on earlier, the Eight of Diamonds, that can vanish just like this and change into the Jack of Clubs, which means the whole deck would then rearrange itself to have to meet this thing because it's an order, which means now here's the Seven of Diamonds, Six of Diamonds, Five of Diamonds, and this whole thing matches again because now here, the eight of diamonds goes. So you don't really, even though you feel you have a free choice, you you miss the moments when I'm influencing you by telling you, you know, top or bottom, all these things. So if you have another number, write that number in the comment section right now. We're going to try it out with this number. Just to be sure that this is really fair. All right? Here you go. So we have 13 there, I think. The Eight of Diamonds seems to be our lucky card today. So let's see if we can find it one more time on a random number in the comment section. Just find that. Until then, sleight of hand is the best. <laughs> what? Gone. Anyway, oops, not there. 
Okay, so um, if there's no more number, we'll, we'll actually move to a different routine here with this. But again, this is new magic that I'm really excited about. Um, so let's say, actually, let's stick with the eight of diamonds. I want to I want to give you guys one more one more chance with this. To oh, someone said seven. Uh, we're going to use your number in just a moment, uh, but you can change your mind. Uh, who is this? Getka. Uh, feel free to to change your mind right now and use a different number or stick with seven. But I want to show you something. Because these are in order, I can take all the diamonds out of the deck. <laughs> Another person says seven. <laughs> Great. I can take all the diamonds out of the deck, which means uh, ace of diamonds, king, queen, jack, ten, nine. Actually, was that nine? Oh, yeah, it was nine. <laughs> Just make sure. Uh, nine, eight. Remember our magic card number eight? Seven. Six, five, four, three, and two. So all the diamonds are going to go over right here. So you can watch them the whole time. And now, now I want to actually change it to 11. See, this is very, I love this. Interestingly enough, if I was a really good magician, I'll be able to make the, what do we have? Eight of diamonds. Make the eight of diamonds vanish from over here and jump over there to the 11th position. Watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is crazy. Nine. I'm so excited for this. Ten. There's actually five spades missing, but fair enough. 11th position right there. Now, you could have said also 12, 13, you could have said any other number, but you said 11. And there's not a single 8 of diamonds anywhere else in the deck, as you can see right now. Except for at the 11th position right there. The 8 of diamonds. <laughs> so this kind of magic I love because I can do it over the camera very slowly, no sleight of hand, um, and people get to make a lot of choices. So I'm really excited to, to share these new projects with you um, that, that keep me excited because I don't know if you're going to change your mind from 7 to 11. Um, of course, there's also more you know visual magic that you could do. So if I wanted to make, or actually there's more diamonds here. Um, if I wanted to, for example, make your card vanish, I could do something like this. Watch. See, all of a sudden, it looks like not just your card vanished, but actually the whole deck is now blank. A completely blank deck except one card in the middle right there. And that, of course, had got to be your eight of diamonds again. Now, I've got a worthless deck here because I wanted to make a deck vanish, but that's okay. For your entertainment pleasure, I'll do these kind of things. <laughs> um, someone saying lovely. I appreciate that. Uh, I do want to get, because I see time is actually getting kind of short because I was uh, trying to limit myself for... Um, for about 30 minutes or so. So again, if you have questions, drop them in the comment section. If not, I'm going to move on now to a different trick that uh, I'll teach you partly at the end of this uh, session. So uh, maybe actually angle it down more so you get to see that too. You should be able to hear. Uh, which is a really cool thing, which is pure sleight of hand. And if you're thinking about getting into magic, that's what I would strongly suggest. Um, you start with because it's so gratifying to learn a simple task perfectly and in about five to ten minutes or so i'm actually going to teach you how to do a little bit of this trick so you get to uh, you get to get that gratification yourself so first let me show you though these are these are uh, american half dollars which is just you know, the, about the biggest coin I could find here without looking like I'm robbing a bank or something. So um, that's what I'm using. So you guys are just 
aware that these are not any trick coins or something like that. I don't know if that even exists. Um, four American half dollars, which you should be able to see in the hand right there. Right? The, the idea here is that the American half dollar or one of them at a time, they'll slowly go in my hand and without sleight of hand like that, it should transfer over one by one. Now, see, I got three here. I'll do this again. I'll do this again, just because no one knew what to expect. Three half dollars, there, one here. Very fair. Hopefully very fair. Hopefully my camera is good enough for this. Watch. This time you might even be able to hear it. Now there's two there and two here. Of course, you can, technically you can do this all day long, right? You, you, you have three here, you have one there, or you actually were at two, two, so there's two, there's two. Yeah, I can do it even on the table. So you see two here, two there, just like this. Three on the table, one in the head. <laughs> and again, this is, uh, this is probably my favorite phase because you, you get to see it until the very end. You get to see one, two, three on the table, one in the hand. Watch. Actually, I'll do it from over here. Nothing in my head. Don't worry. Watch. You might have heard it. That's the fourth coin right there. So this kind of sleight of hand I love because it is so visual. It's so interactive. Um, and anyone can do it pretty much with a little bit of practice. So let me teach you right now, I think right now is the perfect time to teach you how to make a coin vanish, right? So I'm going to, I'm just going to take all the other coins out of the picture here so you can just focus on one. The, the trick I want to teach you today should really feel like you're just taking a coin, blowing on it, and it's completely gone. Of course, as you advance, you get to be better. You get to produce it, reproduce it, really make it look like it's coming out of nowhere. But the technique I want to teach you looks like this. One coin, two empty hands. You're going to take it and just blow on it. And it's gone. If you just saw this and you're thinking, wow, how in the world can that happen? Right? I'll show you. I'll show you right now. So just grab a coin with me so you'll be able to do this with me a lot. Any coin will do. I mean, I can even show you later on with other objects, so you get to you get to follow along and learn this. So, what you the the real trick behind this, and and you have to promise me never to tell anyone because as soon as you spill the secret to your friends, they won't be impressed anymore. Um, but what you want to practice is this motion: setting the coin down, picking it up, and placing it in your left hand. That is the motion you want to practice, because that is what you are pretending to do. Let me show you. You pick up the coin, you place it in your left hand. That is all you have to practice in the beginning. It's still there. But if I do the secret move that I'll teach you in a second, it looks like the same way. Then it's gone. Of course, you can then produce it from anywhere, or like throw it on the ground, or grab a new coin, whatever you want to do at this point. Right? You can make it vanish or come back. But I'm going to teach you right now how I do that. So the real secret here is when you pick up the coin from the table like this, and then pretending to place it in your hand, you're actually going to drop it into your lap. Right? So and my thumb is going to go next to the coin and not grabbing it. It's going to go straight here down into my lap. I'm going to put my feet together so it's not going to hit the ground. So it looks like this. Now, I don't have a coin here anymore because it's down here in my lap. But it sure, if you, if you don't draw any attention to it, it completely looks like you're just picking it up, placing it into the hand. You're not placing anything in the hand. There's nothing here. Now it's gone. Right? So this simple trick... You, I would highly recommend you to practice for hours because this will get you a lifetime of free drinks or coffees or wherever you're going, whatever age you is. Whenever you do this and you're sitting at a table, you find a little coin, place it in front of you, say, 
Watch, I'm going to make this coin vanish, and it's gone. Again, the secret is that you're really dropping it into your lap as you're picking it up. So I'm really just exposed view here, just pushing it into my lap right there. I guarantee you, if you start practicing this trick, you're going to have a crazy amount of fun with it. Uh, I've been performing small miracles like that for the past 17 years, I believe, and you wouldn't believe the kind of situations it's gotten me into. I've gotten into secret parties or bars or restaurants. I skipped the lines just because people never see magic really in real life. So even if you can just do something simple like this, you hold out your hand, you take the coin, you make it vanish, boom. That is a miracle to them. That is always the best moment of their day. And believe me, it's really spectacular when you see the joy in people's eyes when they witness magic in person. So um, after this, I do want to show you maybe one last trick uh, because I mentioned that in the beginning. So if you're at home right now and you have a deck of ca cards on hand that you are willing to sacrifice for this, please do it along with me. All right, so we're going to do this trick together. Um, we're going to do this trick together. Grab any four cards out of the deck. And this can be a shuffle deck. I'm just going to take the top four. It doesn't, really doesn't matter. Um, it really doesn't matter. But I do want to show you one interactive trick that you get to do at home so you can witness the magic in your house. So grab four cards right now. Shuffle them. And now, rip them in half. All four at once. Now, this is going to be up to your decisions. Whatever choice you make, this is what you're going to do. Right? I'm going to make my own decisions here, but that doesn't mean that you have to follow these. You can do whatever you want. You can either pr put your right hand on top, so the, the, the cards in the right hand go on top, or you can put the cards from the left hand go on top. I'm going to choose left hand. Now, we're going to go through a, sp a specific procedure here. So just follow along. We're going to take one, two, three cards and bury them somewhere in the middle of this pack. Not on bottom, not on top. Just put them somewhere in the middle. So we're effectively shuffling these half cards. Um, and oh, I forgot something, so you can do this now. Um, once you put them in the middle, just take that top card and set it aside. We'll come to that later. Now, pick up your, your remaining stack, and now you get to decide. You want to take one card, two cards, or three cards. Up to you. I'm going to take two and put them in the middle of the pack, wherever I want. Again, I get to make the decision. Do I want to take one card? two card or three. I'm going to take three this time, put them anywhere in the middle. So what we're really just doing is shuffling this deck by always taking the top cards or card, single one, and placing it somewhere in the middle. Now, this is the crazy part. If you are with a friend or with your family right now and you're doing this together, if you have those cards all ripped up and both of you have a pile, take that top card and swap it with the person that's next to you. I don't have anyone here, so I'm just going to place that in the middle somewhere. Um, and now we're going to play this very old American game that I've learned when I moved here five years ago, um, which is like a childish game, but I like doing it. It's called She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it goes something like this. Take the top card and put it on the bottom and say, She Loves Me. Now you take the top card and throw it away and say, she loves me not. Next, top card to the bottom, she loves me. Next card, throw it away, she loves me not. Again, top card to the bottom, she loves me. Top card thrown away, she loves me not. Top card to the bottom, she loves me. Next top card, throw it away, she loves me not. Top card to the bottom, she loves me. The top card throw it away, she loves me not. And one more time, top card bottom, top card, throw it away, she loves me not. So hopefully through all these random procedures and your decisions, which cards to stick in the middle, which cards to throw away, right? You, We randomized it with this whole, uh, she loves me not and throwing it away. Hopefully you're left with one piece of card now. 
now remember we've set one card aside in the very beginning randomly after shuffling after you chose what to put on top or bottom and if everything went correctly you should have a perfect match not just in the back but also in front so if you followed along doing this at home just now uh, please Take a picture or something of your card, share it with us in the comment section. We'd love to love to see if this works because everything virtual is always a little bit of an experiment. So if you're wondering right now, um, wait, why didn't it work for me? Why did it only work on the camera? You know, send us a message or something and we'll figure it out. We'll jump on a private Zoom call with you and teach you this trick or, or do this trick with you personally. Um, so with that in mind, I think I am pretty much all out of tricks. I'm also pretty much, uh, I think this tea is cold by now. <laughs> uh, but I'll do this one last thing for you. I just do this. Maybe, I don't even know if you can see this, but I want to show you this. Oops. Hopefully, if you shake tea just a little, you should be able to turn the cup over. and make it vanish. <laughs> so those are the kind of tricks you'll be learning if you did magic for, I don't know how many years, but uh, once you get the coin thing started, you should be able to produce and make all other kind of things vanish. So it's a wonderful hobby to pick up. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed your time with me today. I sure love the FOMO No More uh, movement, and I really want to support it with all the magic that I that I have here and that I come up with. So hopefully I'll get to see you guys more in the coming weeks. Um, if you have any questions, I, I'm not sure if I saw any in the comment section right now. I will be answering them afterwards um, in, you know, in the comment section too, so don't if there's because of this lack you didn't get that answered but i'll be in touch with you for sure so um again i hope you enjoyed this today thank you for tuning in i know the formal uh, no more like facebook page has so much going on so just follow it keep watching it uh, there's a lot of great input and um yeah with these things in mind thank you guys for joining and happy sunday if you're still Sunday, if not, happy Monday, or if you're watching from the East Coast or something, I don't know where what time it is. I don't really get this time thing, but I'm excited that you're here right now. So everyone, have a wonderful rest of your time. Stay positive, and I hope I'll see you soon.